Hi, I'm Ashley Shaw and I'm a registered dietitian. And you might be surprised to know this, but I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes. So I just want to tell you a little bit about my experience. Every woman who is pregnant around 28 weeks has what you have, what we call the glucose tolerance test, where you have to drink a very sugary, syrupy solution and then have your blood test. And it's really important because it does check to see um, how capable your body is at clearing out glucose um, after a meal. And I obviously did not think that I was going to fail this test, but I did. Um, and then what happens after that is you then go for a second test. And at that point you drink more of that solution and you also then have your blood drawn three different times afterwards so they can test again. If you pass the week 28 glucose tolerance test, then you're basically good to go for the remainder of your pregnancy in relationship to gestational diabetes. If you don't, like me, then you then have some additional testing, and if you don't pass that, then it's time to start managing that gestational diabetes during your pregnancy. Once I got past the shock of being diagnosed with the gestational diabetes, I, I have to admit, I was, I was devastated, I cried. I was really upset because my profession is basically helping people either prevent this or manage this. Uh, but once I was able to get past that shock and I got over that, um, obviously I had to find strategies to manage it. And um, I have to say that some of the the doctors, you know, they'll have you see an endocrinologist. They'll talk to your gyno. Um, I definitely recommend talking to a dietitian because I think they have just a little bit more of that um, more intuitive type advice that will help you. And so I sought out a lot of um, different types of websites, webinars, blogs from other fellow dietitians. And um, really the, the main thing that it came down to, if you don't want to take medicine, is you do have to control your diet. Even though I was being healthy, or what I thought was healthy, you know, you're pregnant, so your body is just acting in ways that you can't really control, and you have to change some things up. So my main changes were that I moved all my exercise to the morning. I did that. I would go on the treadmill every morning after I woke up before I ate, and I always made sure that I had protein at breakfast. So whereas I might have had oatmeal or just some Greek yogurt with berries, I had to add a little bit more protein. So I was having a lot more eggs or maybe adding nuts to the oatmeal and the Greek yogurt. I didn't want to take any medication and to make sure that I was being healthy and everything was okay for the baby, the doctors did ask me to test my blood sugar four times a day with a monitor. And that fasting glucose, that number that you get in the morning before you've eaten anything, that's a totally hormonal number. It really doesn't have anything to do with the meal that you had the night before because so much time has gone by. And when I found that when I exercise, that number would be lower. And that's, again, that's just hormonally, the way your body releases different hormones and it kind of helps that glucose move and go where it has to go. Something really important to understand about gestational diabetes and even all diabetes is when you're managing it with food, carbs aren't the enemy, but you wanna pick smarter carbohydrate choices. So definitely not having sugary foods, you know, baked goods or sweetened cereals. If it's breakfast, you know, definitely having more like fresh fruit with an omelet. If you're gonna have a smoothie, making sure that you are then, again, adding elements of fiber and protein to that smoothie so it's not just a whole bunch of sugar that you're drinking. Um, really the important thing there is it's the pairing. Just do you have that element of protein? Is it the egg at breakfast? Is it nuts at your snack time? Is it, um, you know, is it turkey on your sandwich, whatever it is, you just want to make sure you have enough protein to balance out the carbohydrates. You don't have to cut carbohydrates out of your diet altogether. I will say that there are a few things I would recommend avoiding just to be safe, and that's really going to be sweetened beverages. I know 
you might be craving maybe a glass of orange juice or that soda even, but that sugar is really concentrated and there's nothing else in the beverage to help slow down that breakdown, you're gonna get that blood sugar go straight into your system and you're gonna get a spike and we really don't wanna prevent that. So if you do get diagnosed with gestational diabetes, I would really cut out any soda or juice or any sweetened beverages. If you like to put sugar in your coffee or tea, I would probably just try to do less or cut that out if you can for the remainder of your pregnancy. It's really easy to, of course, slip when you're pregnant, you have cravings and you just want that milkshake, you know, right then and there. Um, and then it's also easy to then spiral from there and feel really guilty because you're worried about the baby. So first off, take the pressure off yourself. It's okay to have those things every once in a while. Um, but know that by managing your gestational diabetes with diet and some additional exercise, you really are just making it a safer environment for yourself, for the baby. In the end, everyone turned out really healthy. Lucy was a health, healthy eight pounds, eight ounces, perfect blood sugar, and same for me. So I was able to do it and I know you'll be able to do it too. I hope this helps to ease your mind and fuel your body.